So like anyway, as I was saying, you know, like my account finally worked out that I didn't owe them anything, right? There'd been a mistake in the paperwork and they owed me 15 pounds 75. So I claimed to, well, I mean, I really think you've got to. I mean, ignore them once and they just keep on and on taking advantage of you, you know? Yeah. Um, perhaps I should explain at this stage. Um, this is Valerie Jane Turpitt, uh, daughter of Mr. Max Turpitt and Mrs. Joy Turpitt. Uh, Valerie went to Greece last year, Skiathos, because she went to Egna the year before that. Manos was quite nice, but not as nice as Blopos. Uh, Valerie split up with Terry two months ago. Terry's a right bastard. Valerie's well shot of him. Valerie moved over from New York two years ago. Uh, Valerie's a systems analyst in Price Waterhouse. Valerie's not too sure about Miss Cartwright. Miss Cartwright thinks she's God's gift to management, but Valerie thinks she's underqualified and overpromoted. Uh, Valerie gets a 625 from Charing Cross each night because the 610 is always too crowded for Valerie. But that's okay. That suits Valerie because it means Valerie can have a drink in the coach and horses. Oh, and Valerie's decided on blue for the back room. <laughs> I, it's amazing, actually, that I, that I should know this, because I have known Valerie Jane Turpitt for precisely three minutes. <laughs> three minutes. You know, I'm thinking moving house. You know, I've done all that estate agent stuff, you know, but I really can't decide whether to get a large place and have a lodger or a smaller place, you know, and just stay on my own, like, because I really need my own space sometimes, you know what I mean? I already know more about this person than I know about my own parents. <laughs> oh, I've been feeling a little bit down recently. Uh, well, whatever you do, don't ask her why. Do not encourage her on this question. Do not ask her why. Really? I think I might be pregnant. Oh, I don't think we need to know this. I do not think I actually need to know this information. This is not necessary information. Yeah, you know, the condom split, and of course I can't use the coil. Oh, don't ask her why. Just do not ask her why. This is how serious. Whatever you do, just do not ask her why. Really? Infection. Oh, God. Oh, you, you know what's happening, don't you? We're going downstairs. Yeah, you know, flamed ovaries, they almost burst. <laughs> and then, like, the stitching went septic, you know. I've got, I've got a faint. And, like, there was blood everywhere, right, all over the supermarket, like, everywhere. And the pain, well, it was like being dragged across the floor by a fish hook, you know. <laughs> really? Oh, phone the police, please. Somebody phone the police. Just arrest her. Just get her out of my life. No. Actually, you know, it was really, really lucky it didn't spread to my uterus. Of course, not that I'd have known, because I've never found it. My uterus, that is. They said it's supposed to feel like the tip of your nose. Do you think your uterus feels like the tip of your nose? <laughs> this is a question I cannot answer. I have known this woman for five minutes, and already we're swapping amusing uterus anecdotes. Well, do you? Where did you get your shoes? Oh, Hobson's. Actually, it's really convenient. It's right next door to my gynecologist. Oh, no! <laughs> Excuse me. years off and addicted his wife to heroin. He's tried to commit suicide, but he's getting himself back together and he's going after the kidnappers. It's a comedy. <laughs> no, it's a thriller. Well, we're very lucky to have Who's the one in the hat? Um, Which one? They're all wearing hats. <laughs> the big one. The big person or the big hat? Both. <laughs> His name as well, okay? Was Jane Harlow a man? Would you please shut up? I'm trying to watch the film, okay? 
I'm sorry, I was just trying to concentrate. Jean Harlow was a woman. J-E-A-N is the female spelling. G-E-N-E is the male spelling. Okay? Thank you. Tell me, could you take your hat off, please? She's not wearing a hat. Could you let your hair down, please? Shh! Legs in, please. Uh, oh, sorry? But they're blocking the arse, so you want. Could you put your legs in, please? I mean, the seats are very tight. It's very uncomfortable. There's been a complaint. <laughs> Who from? Uh, the Queen. <laughs> the Queen? Yes. She's just been on the telephone and she's a little bit worried about your legs, so could you put them in, please? Sir? So, what possible harm can they do like this? <laughs> Any amount of harm, sir. <clears throat> Sylvia! Yes, sir. Imagine that there's been a fire and there's been a mad rush to the exits led by Sylvia here. Your legs are blocking the aisle. Sylvia. <laughs> and then, sir, I will be forced by law to do this. <laughs> so, if you wouldn't mind, sir, legs in. <clears throat> <laughs> Seems like a nice man. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. The Queen's all right now, sir. No trouble at all with the Queen. It's Prince Philip. <laughs> He's still a little bit unhappy, sir, and he wonders if you wouldn't mind a moving in a seat. <sighs> That's the way, sir. Keep the royals happy. Do your bit for the country. Oh, Christ, I've seen this. <laughs> this one, he gets killed right at the end. He gets shot. <laughs> I'll never get my money back. What a brilliant ticket, eh? It's like a red ticket. Isn't it? I got a ticket like this once at a museum. Just like this. Well, it was a bit bigger, like, and it was a different colour. But you know what? <laughs> I was definitely a ticket, which is a bit of a coincidence. It's different from a bus ticket, isn't it? This? I mean, you, you couldn't use that on a bus. Or a train. <laughs> or a boat. Or a plane. You know, you couldn't, oh, you could use it, like, but you couldn't use it as a ticket. You could maybe use it, say, as a... Badge or as a, a wee handkerchief. <laughs> Maybe it's a beer mat or something, or uh, perhaps for wrapping up a peanut. <laughs> Thankfully, real life is not like that. Nothing like that ever happens in life. Well, not in my life anyway. <laughs> Nothing much seems to happen. Each day seems just like the last. I know my future will be exactly like my past. Excitement seems to make a point of passing me by. The trouble is I'm just an ordinary guy. I'll never be the NATO troops commander I'll never play tennis like Matt Villander I'll never grease myself and swim the English Channel I'll never win a prize from the Nobel panel I'll never be promoted by the statue of I'll never feel the clothes from a smiling red at Scotchy I'll never take as many drugs as Timothy Leary I'll never co-star with Robert Brigham I'll never be as funny as Stan and Ollie or Sailor. He's just a normal guy. 
I'm just, he's just a normal guy. I'm a typical, conventional, commonplace case, an average Joe, an ordinary schmo, a Joseph with no hope that no one wants to meet. I'm the middle of the road, man in the street. I'll never be an astronaut standing on Jupiter. I'll never find a word that rhymes with Jupiter. I'll never be as much in love as Vladimir Nabokov. I'll never speak Russian like the Red in the Karakamov. I'll never file a war report from war torn Beirut. I've got as much talent as Austin Well Sharut. I'm just, just a normal guy. I'm just, just a normal guy. A normal guy. what the Queen does. <laughs> she is king of all the country and the world and the universe. <laughs> and she can see everything what is happening everywhere. For, but she has the special glasses. <laughs> what was given to her by the... Uh, by Jesus. <laughs> yes. And she is the boss of all the world. And she can do anything what she wants. But you must listen to the Queen. Because if you did, then she might chop your head off. <laughs> yes, she might chop it off with a really sharp knife. <laughs> what she keeps in the drawer. <laughs> and what gets sharpened by the servant. <laughs> who wears the shoes. <laughs> and the Queen is very, very pretty. And she wears lipstick. <laughs> and she is, um, she is 20. <laughs> no, she's 30, no, 50. No, she isn't any old, because the Queen does not ever die or be sick. <laughs> and, and the other thing what the Queen does not never do is she does not go to the toilet. <laughs> she doesn't. It's true because my mum taught my teacher. T it's true. <laughs> and the Queen wears the very special fluffy hat with the diamonds and the rubies and the gold and the silver and material. <laughs> And it costs a hundred pounds and twenty-five pounds and a million pounds. <laughs> so nobody must steal it. But once a robber did steal it and the Queen said, quickly get the police! <laughs> now wait a minute, because I think that the, the police live in the Queen's house in case there is a war or the bomb. Yes. Anyway, and the police, they do. They live in the Queen's garden in little weeny boxes. <laughs> and they wear, they wear really big, huge, enormous, big black furry hats. <laughs> yes, they do. And they are not allowed to ever take them off. Right. And if the Queen blows the whistle, then they have to one and one and one. <laughs> and they get in a van, what is a special van, <laughs> what has, um, has holes cut out of the top of it so they can wear the hats. <laughs> They get a nasty bump. <laughs> and then they chase after the wobber. But the Queen does not chase after the wobber. She stays at home and gives lunch to the poor black babies. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they have soup. <laughs> and then, anyway, the police, they run after the thief and they find him and he is hiding in a monkey's cave. And when they find him, they shout, Quickly! Get the... Get... Get the thing! And, and, and the policeman, what has the biggest furry hat, says to the wobber, You are very, very naughty boy. And you will get a punch. And then they kill him for being so naughty. And then they give the hat back to the Queen and she says thank you and she gives them money and a present <laughs> and that is what happens it's true I know because I do 
<laughs> Say, Father, the captions underneath the photographs of the famous people at the front of the magazine are most humorous. Indeed they are, eldest son. I trust that the person responsible for writing them gets paid a stack of money, as they say. <sighs> Still, really? Where are they? This is a fine how do you do. I know, Father. <laughs> really, with only three hours to go until the Sunday service. I'm sure, there's a rational explanation. Mm, we shall see. In the meantime, I shall phone the Reverend Splendid, read this morning's service. Ah, good morning, Reverend Splendid. Sorry to call you on what is, after all, your big day. May I begin by congratulating you on last week's service, which was both uplifting and yet at times contained slight dashes of humor, something often neglected in our churches these days. And yet, who was it who gave us our sense of humor in the first place, if it wasn't the good Lord himself? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, the Reverend Splendid. Now, the purpose of my phone call is to establish your hymn selection so that we may be best prepared for what is, after all, an important part of the service. I see. Number 23, 48, 148, and Psalm 14. Oh, where are they? Good morning, family. Good almost mid-morning's more like it. Where on earth have you been? I must apologize for my tardiness, Father. I have been out in the garden collecting wood. For the kindling. Oh, well, in that case, fine. The kindling can at times be most handy. You may be seated. Not you, second twin. I notice you have no kindling. What were you doing the while? <laughs> I was practicing the cub law, Father. Hmm. May we hear it? Oh, well, I'd, I'd only just begun to... Oh, yes, oh, please. please. <laughs> right. <clears throat> I promise. That's as far as I've got. <laughs> Come along, second twin. Surely you can do better than that. Uh, I promise to be a cub. <laughs> a whole cub and nothing but a cub. <laughs> I hardly think so. Now, come on, I promise. I promise to wear a woggle, uh, lots of green clothes, go camping and eat beans. the point of investiture as a fool a killer as well. You have let down your pack, your family, yourself, your dentist, the local ironmonger, my trouser press. <laughs> you have forfeited our weekly video viewing of going for a song with Arthur Magus the dead man. <laughs> I understand, Father. You may be seated. Now, family, I want you all to be particularly kind to your mother today. As you may or may not know, it is of no import. It is 40 years to the day since our pet hamster, Hamilton, passed on. <laughs> <laughs> so, any black plates, cups, etc. needing washed, today's the day. Now, before we head off, I think there's just time for our pre-service prayer prayer. Indeed. <clears throat> God bless all the family until we get to church when the Reverend Splendid can do it properly. <laughs> and God bless the house while we're away. And God forgive those of us who were tardy this morning. And forgive Second Twin for not knowing the cub law. And God help Mother in this her hour of need. And God rest Hamilton, although I never knew him, he was just like a hamster to me. <laughs> Amen. 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 
and thou. Yes, well said. It needed said and well said. Yes, yes. indeed, yes. Yes, well, things have come to this, Donald, eh? Yes, well, it's not so bad, George. I yes. mean, plenty to eat anyway, you know. Yes, dear, I suppose so. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> Look at that, you see? What's up, George? See that little thing flashing in the corner of your screen there, yes? Oh, dear. Yes, you know what that means, don't you? Yes, that means a very small part of your TV's buggered. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, that means that the, uh, the advertising interlude oh, I see. is on its way. <laughs> right, I understand, uh, yeah. I'm sorry about this, everyone. There's, a, there's nothing we can do about it, but, you know, there you go. <laughs> well, uh, it puts us out as much as it puts you out, but uh, we'll try and uh, come back as soon as we possibly can. <laughs> Uh, while we're in commercial mode, I just thought I'd mention a rather natty pair of uh, plus threes and uh, an autographed bar of chocolate. One pounds fifty, the pair. Sorry, Donald, what's going on here? Just trying to offload a couple of items, John. Well, I hardly, hardly think that this is the time nor the place for that sort of thing. <laughs> There's no need to get so cantankerous. Oh, cantankerous, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yes, it is cantankerous. Oh, I don't think you know what that means, actually. Yes, I do. I bet you don't. Well, I know what some of it means. <laughs> what do you mean you know what some of it means? Well, I know what can't means. Yes. And I know what the us at the end means. Yes, but you don't know what the whole word means. Yes, but I can work it out. I can't. <laughs> well, look, look, look. Can't, right, is unable to. Yes. OK. And us is we, ourselves. Sure, yes. So you're left with Ankero. Can't Ankero us. Unable to Ankero we. <laughs> you see, so all we've got to do is work out what Ankero means. No, no, look, cantankerous is, uh, is argumentative, perverse of temper. Right, so Ankero must mean be pleasant to. Can't Ankero us unable to be pleasant to we? <laughs> it's not how words are worked out, is it? <laughs> of course it is. Oh, okay, okay. If that's how words are worked out, I'll pick another word. You tell me where it came from. Okay, okay. Right. But only, only if you're going to be can anchorous. Can anchorous. Yes, able to be pleasant to us. <laughs> what do you mean us? There's only you. Okay, okay. Can anchor on me? <laughs> if you're can anchor on me, fair enough. Okay, okay. We'll give it a bash. We'll give it a bash. Okay, um, give me a word. Oh, give me a word. Give me a word. Okay. Right. Restaurant. What did that? Restaurant. From? Yeah, restaurant. Restaurant. Tell me that. Right. So smart. Restaurant. Right, yes, yes. Rest your aunt, it was originally. <laughs> well, people would go out walking with their aunt, right? <laughs> they'd get a bit peckish. Oh, really? So they'd stop off at the rest your aunt for a bite to eat, which in time became restaurant as we know it. OK, OK, you've got your rest. I'll give you that. You've got your aunt, U-R-A-N-T, for your aunt. What about the extra A? What extra A? R-E-S-T-A-U-R-A-N-T. That A. <laughs> well, obviously. Well, obviously. Originally. Originally. Yes. Originally. Yes. It was rest A, your aunt, rest B, your uncle, C, <laughs> or whatever. But in time, they settle for rest A, your aunt, restaurant. So why that one? Well, that's easy to say. Well, look, rest bar uncle is hardly impossible. <laughs> well, okay, okay, rest bar uncle is not impossible. But you try saying, rest P, your great-great-grandfather, <laughs> on your mother's side. <laughs> I suppose I see what you're saying well, now. Well, so it's yes. obvious, isn't it? Very obvious. OK, another word then. Right. What about... what about death? Go on. Do it now. No one will ever know. He's old. You're young. You're fresh. You've got your whole life ahead of you. Just take the knife from the draw. Behind him, quiet now. And plunge the knife in deep, slashing, carving. Just watch his lifeblood ebb away. Go on, do it. And the purpose of your visit to the United States, sir, business or pleasure? Pleasure. Now, I'm going to ask you a few simple questions, sir, which I'd like you to answer. Are you now or have you ever been a practicing homosexual? No. Are you now or have you ever been a card-carrying member of the Communist Party? No. Have you ever suffered from any of the following diseases? 
African swamp mumps, <laughs> throttle body, no. lard fever, no. butter teeth, no. Vincent's curly toes, no. soup rash, no. bacon bread, no. puddle nose, no. double leg, Ginalala Brigada, <laughs> awkward lobes, colic scrofula, dribble down syndrome, <laughs> Nini, goatee beard, Mmba, <laughs> Zapati mustache, wig spots, butts, or lumpy pox. What's Mmba? That's an intestinal disorder common to farmyard animals who go Mmba. <laughs> In that case, no. For them all? Yeah. Even puddle nose? Yes, yes, I'm quite sure. I see. Ground teeth, crushed tongue, ears, and testicles are the main ingredients of what? The hamburger. <laughs> Spell pumpernickel. P U M P E R N I I C E I C K E L. Correct. Pecan, thrumbleberry, and pumpkin are all types of what? <clears throat> Pie. Complete the following popular sayings: Oompa Oompa. Stick it up your jumper. <laughs> Jeepers creepers. Where'd you get them peepers? Milk milk lemonade. Round the corner chocolates made. <laughs> Truman Capote's dress sense was A dreadful, B tasteless, and C appalling. All three. Who's this? Wall, Harvey, it looks like we're drinking on our hall this evening. <laughs> James Stewart. I'm a Yankee Doodle what? Dandy. Put these on and call for Pluto. <clears throat> oh, Pluto, Pluto, where are you, naughty dog? Come here, what's Pluto? Well, uh, thank you very much, sir. Everything seems to be in order. <clears throat> Welcome to the land of the free. Thank you. <clears throat> So did you do it? No, maybe just as well. Because I found the perfect murder weapon. Ice. <laughs> and afterwards, it melts. No one will ever know. Or maybe cyanide. Think of all the bad times. <laughs> or acid. If it's pain you're after, you can't beat acid. Or a blowtorch. <laughs> Scald the selfish skin from his aging body. Or a megaphone. <laughs> Shouts so loud his head explodes. <laughs> or there's always the old standby. <laughs> right between the eyes. <laughs> Less but effective. Just have a bottle of detergent ready for the walls. <laughs> and a box of easy white extra strength tissues. <laughs> and a mop. <laughs> or better still, kill him with a mop. Bludgeon <laughs> him to death. <laughs> and afterwards, you can clean up with the same mop. So simple, so concise, so economical. Just do it! <laughs> God, I've gone blind. Help, we can't see anything. You haven't gone blind. Pull your hat up. <laughs> Shut your noise, you bugger. Stay in, stay out. It's moan, moan, moan. Moan is me, I should call you. I can hear me half function. And it's always me, 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 all the bloody time. I said take off your water cord, but they don't give you airs your father for the oh doing. God. And that's how mistakes are made. Bloody buggers this and the bloody <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing now? Shift your weight, can't you? Oh, no. I can't move this thing with you sitting there not saying anything. How come you never say nothing? I knew a bugger once, never said a word. Couldn't talk to him. Tomorrow I'm going down to Brighton and I ain't drinking you with me. Oh, I'm going to have a very nice day. I'm going to have a bit of a dip. Oh, stop your shouting! I can't respond to that sort of howling. I should be better off when you're gone, you miserable bugger. <laughs> Yes, 
Yes, that's lovely. <laughs> I'll enjoy that, it's quiet. Hello, Pencil. Hello, Gwyneth. What are you doing here? I live here. <laughs> well, you could always move out. <laughs> I must say, you are looking very attractive today. Are you ill? <laughs> yes, I am sick of the sight of you. <laughs> I have just knocked the cat out for the night. Uh, <laughs> goodness, goodness, you're spoiling that animal. <laughs> goodness, there are an old saying what goes, you are what you eat. And Yao have obviously eaten something very stupid. Pencil, <laughs> I have told you before, and I won't tell you again. Pencil? <laughs> uh. Yes, Gurnis? How would you like to put some shelves up? How would I like to put some shelves up? <laughs> Have birds got beaks? <laughs> well, the beakless ones haven't. <laughs> yes, all right, good news, all right. But the beaked birds have got beaks, haven't they? Yes. Yes, that's right. Well, shelves, I think, this calls for a little celebratory cup of cheese water. Now, <laughs> 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 uh, oh, flipping it. Why did this kettle keep picking up Radio One? Mind about that, Denzil? Shelves. <laughs> Just a minute. Drop it. So anyway, sir, you come right out the subway, sir, okay? Right out the subway. Okay, like Mr. Jenkins. Out the subway, okay? And then you're right across Times Square, sir, okay? And then you get to 44th Street and you've got to be quick, it's got to be a... Across 44th Street, sir. Watch out for the eh, 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 you know what I mean, sir. And then it's... <laughs> right away along there. Right to the end, sir. And you'll find the World Trade Center facing you, sir. Okay? Oh, right. Thanks. So, sir, now it's out of the building here, okay? And then to your... Okay, and then straight... Right, right under thank, the thank you. Thank you, thank right, you, thank you so much. Thank you. I'd say well, sir. Is the name and... Is the game, sir. Yes, indeed. <laughs> There's one boy who knows where he's going. And here's another boy who knows where that boy is going. So that's two boys who knows where that boy is going. <laughs> so, what's on the brew, Andrew? Eh? What's the scam, Sam? What oh, do you want, right. Mary Quant? <laughs> what are you after, Jimmy? Jimmy after. <laughs> Taxi for Wilson. Wilson. Fuck Wilson. Where Wilson? Who Wilson? To where? To where? To where? To where? Who? Who? To where were you, Wilson? Frank Wilson, room 332, extension 3372, going to Charing Cross. See? You give me the info, I can do you for. Uh, where do you think you're going? Intruder? Uh, I just popped out the building, but I forgot my pass, so uh, I I'm popping back in to uh, pick it up. Oh, I see, sir. I, well, that's fair enough, sir. I believe you, sir. You look like an honest gentleman, sir. My ass, you do! <laughs> <laughs> look, I just left the building a minute ago. I, just... I, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Security main desk <laughs> speaking. You will have to hold. We're in the middle of an emergency procedure. You will have to hold. Could I give him a buzz up like Touch that phone at your peril, sir. <laughs> Company property must not be interfered with by aliens. <laughs> Even at a time of intruder crisis, sir. Look, uh, I'm going to be late. Can we sort this out later on? We'll sort I... this out now, sir, if you don't mind. Now, <clears throat> you say you work here, sir, yes? Yes. So you say you would have a working knowledge of the building and its environs? As they say. Okay, simple question, sir. Should sort this out. If you were to turn around, sir, and go <coughs> straight through the <coughs> down the <coughs> okay, straight past it. <coughs> no, the first on your <coughs> no, the second on your <coughs> but the third on your <coughs> then. <coughs> where would you be standing, sir? <clears throat> Back here, where I started. Lucky guess, Mr. Jenkins. Lucky <laughs> guess. Look, you know my name. Another lucky guess, George. As was that. So, intruder, 
We can do this two ways. You can leave the building now, or you can stand there till quarter past Tuesday. <laughs> Good night, sir. Thank you so much. No problem, no problem. <coughs> hey. Is that Mr. Wilson, extension 3372? No, this is Mr. Wilson. This is extension 3372, and this is my taxi. Oh, uh, well, uh, good, good night, sir. Uh, glad to be of, uh, uh, as they say, sir. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Security, main desk, <laughs> speaking. We have a rogue telephone situation. <laughs> telephone situation. This is not a drill. This is not a drill. <laughs> die, die, die. Die, die, die. Hi. Hi, right. Hi, right. Hi, right. Hi, right. Hi, right. Hi, I make it swear, I make it go to sleep. 